Okay, um, these are my red coats that I have painted. They belong to the Upper Canada Fencibles, I believe. Uh, it was really hard to get information on a professional red coat regiment in the War of 1812 in Canada that was not British. But uh, they did have a regiment of Fencibles and red coats in. Uh, Upper Canada, and they would have been stationed at Fort George, which is uh, off the Niagara River. Um, let's see. Okay, uh, I did get one thing wrong. Their cuffs and their collars are blue, and in reality, that regiment would have had uh, gold cuffs and collars. But other than that, uh, these are as accurate as I can make them. Um, let's see. This is a basis kind of on the Battle of Queenston Heights. The soldiers marching, uh, sandbag emplacements, destroyed cannon. Um, let's see. I have a couple of militia guys uh, in buckskin, which would have also been there. Um, and over here we have the great Canadian hero, which actually was British, uh, but he's a hero to Canada, Sir Isaac Brock whose famous line, uh, push forward, was said right before he was shot in the chest by a musket ball from an American sharpshooter. Uh, but that would be him leading his men from the front. And there's a university named after him, and there's a large column in Niagara Park, and many busts across Canada. And, let's see, this would be his second in command, who was a brigadier general at the time, named... Brigadier Roger Hell Sheaf. I'm sorry I'm not really on the spot with this, but this is just sort of a thing. And I just thought I'd give you just a little bit of the history. Um, so again, Canadian Red Coast cuffs should be gold instead of uh, blue. Um, you'll notice, just on a side note, that a few of these men are... Uh, African Canadian or black and the thing was I had to study up on it um, there were very few professional soldiers that were black in the Canadian and British forces and as it turns out they did have some drummers in the British Army you could start at 12 years old as a drummer uh, and some units had black drummers as their mascots which I guess I don't know, that may be meant to de be degrading, it may have just been the culture at the time. But, um, there very few were let in, and they were only let in as drummers at first. Now, if someone got past the age at which they needed to be a drummer and wanted to be a professional line soldier, that did happen on occasion, and usually, though, popu because of the population was so small in Upper Canada, and in Great Britain, you only had about two to three soldiers that were Africa, uh, African, Canadian, or black that were not drummers. Um, in the militia, which I have a militia man here, it was a little different. Um, there were a lot of free blacks in Canada and Great Britain. There was still tragically slavery. Um, but there, there were free black men who since 1793 had been a part of the uh, militia to defend Canada from the United States. Um, let me see about that. Um, there was not a professional regiment raised, but there was an attempt to add a detachment of black soldiers to the 1st Lincoln Militia. Unfortunately, the man they put in charge was Robert uh, Ranchery, and he was a noted racist. Tra uh, he put them in actually to serve vile duties uh, in the homes of certain officers and uh, landowners and um, had them perform menial tasks for what would be a menial task to a soldier. And um, they did not see a lot of action under him. Later, uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he was relieved of his command and they were at further battles um, passed. They may have been 
by that time at the Battle of uh, Queenston Heights. Um, but there were a lot of black Canadians who served in the militia well before the War of 1812 broke out. Um, I only had a couple of figures from another set to be militia. I'm actually going to buy another set that I can use. But um, I know this is going on for a bit longer. I'm sorry about that. Uh, these are French creations that I cannot remember the name of. They were to ward off cavalry and destroyed cannon, sandbags. Again, there's Brock and the Brigadier. Um, as, histor as historically accurate as I could make them, um, the sergeants actually would have carried a sword and a huge pike and that was because as their men would shoot at around 100, 100 to 50 yards away they would be com com commanding and directing the fire once hand-to-hand -hand combat was initiated that pike was longer than any uh, musket with a bayonet and it could actually have the advantage in hand-to-hand -hand combat much longer than the muskets. Uh, the Shakos, or the stove type, type Shakos, um, they were just transferring in the middle of the war to the Balak Shako, but even at the end of the war, there were still some regiments who had the stove top Shako, which actually, hey, I like the look of that better. Um, so, yeah, that's... That's my group, and there were also drummers, by the way, that, that were not black. Again, at 12 years old, you could join the British Army back then, and that would be your first position, that and possibly stretcher bearer. And these men are on the road to King... To, excuse me. These men are on the road to Queenston Heights to defend Canada from the United States. And that's my third set. The first set I had was the Glengarry Light Infantry of Upper Canada, which were green uniforms. Uh, this, the second was the Royal Canadian Artillery, which was locally raised artillery. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any three-inch guns. They were nine, I mean, any three-pound guns. They were nine-pound guns, which they did have. So I just thought three-pound guns were more plentiful. And this is a lot professional line infantry, the fencibles of... Upper Canada, who mostly acted as garrison, but during the Battle of Queenston Heights, they were led by Major General Sir Isaac Brock, and they pushed the Americans off the heights, and they saved Canada. Um, and I guess that's it. I'm still working on the militia next, and then the Dragoons, and then some First Nations, and then I'll buy the book Shaco 2, which will teach me how to play tabletop wargaming. And I'll find somebody who's got an American army or making an American army on my own and um, play Shaco too. Alright, thank you.